when you visit a web page and you are looking at the actual content, what you see on the screen is your browser making decisions based on what's in your code. Your browser uses the code to render the web page. It uses this information to display what everyone sees when they load up a page. Most browsers, especially desktop browsers, will let you go in and inspect the code for yourself and even go further to let you edit the code and see the changes in the browser, just like this. It's always very fun to test that relationship between the code and the render content, but of course, when you refresh, all your works go away because those changes were just on your browser and not globally. A MacBook Pro, a Surface Studio, an iPhone, an Android Mobile, an iPad. What all these have in common is that they use this code to render web content just like every modern computing device out there. How is this code now sent to your computer or mobile? Well, that's what I'll be sharing in this video. So hit the subscribe button and let's get started. To answer this question, let's go back and study how the internet works. The internet is simply an interconnectivity of computer networks. Okay, let me simplify this further. The internet is just composed of billions of computers that are all connected to each other using copper telephone wires, TV cables, and fiber optic cables. Let me not bore you with the technical details. Well, I'm pretty sure you didn't come here to receive a boring lectures on how cables are laid in oceans and stuff. Good. Going online means connecting your computer to the internet. That is, your computer joins the connection of millions of other computers. These days, you can do so without the use of cables, thanks to the wireless technology, which more or less you depend on these physical cables though. Websites are stored in the internet, and the internet is made up of many computers. This means websites are stored in computers. This implies any computer can store websites. Your PC can store websites, your phone can also store websites. Once you are connected to the internet, you can access and view websites using an application called Web Browser. A web browser isn't the internet itself, it, was, it only has the ability to render web pages using its code. Some might ask questions like, if websites will be stored in phones and PCs, does that mean that when I write my code and save it to my device, everyone can access it? <laughs> we already know the answer, no. You can only access the website stored in a computer if you have its IP address. An IP address is a set of four digits separated by periods that are used to locate a website. Unlike the device you are using, the computers that make up the internet are constantly connected to the network and the IP addresses are public. They can be accessed by anyone connected to that network. But your IP address is masked, it's not public, I don't know yours and you probably won't know mine. Oh sorry, you most certainly won't know mine. <laughs> And we're not even connected on the same network. Therefore, I can't access the websites on your device. You are the only one who can. Unless, of course, you share. Oh, sorry, you allow someone to connect to the same network as you and you share IP address to that person. Then he can now access your site. For those who don't know how to get the IP addresses in Windows, it's very easy. Press the Windows button and type in CMD and open the command prompt app or the terminal as I love to call it. Make sure you are connected to a network, perhaps your modem, your MiFi, router, or even your phone hotspot. Type ipconfig and hit enter. A couple of lines will appear on your screen. Look at this line that says IP, IPv4 address. The number here is your IP address. What then happens when you visit the website? Well, visiting a website starts from entering an address in your browser's address bar, like example.com. This is what we call a URL. A URL is a human-friendly name for a website's address. Remember what I said earlier that you can only access, um, sorry, you can only access the website stored in a computer if you have its IP address. Yeah. However, we can't possibly remember these bunches of random numbers each time we want to access any website. I mean, come on, doesn't mean we have to enter um this code to access Google all the time. I don't even remember the combination. To be sincere, I just copied it from a Google search right now. Here comes the URL, the human-friendly set of characters that point to a particular IP address. 
So for example, google.com points to this address. Next, your browser uses DNS to find the website's IP address. I typed example.com earlier on the search bar, right? That's not something a computer can work with. It needs to be translated to an IP address. And this is accomplished by something we call DNS. Once your browser has found the IP address, it asks the website server if it's open to establishing new connections. And if yes, the computer sends a request for data over these wires to the server. A server is a computer that provides data to other computers. The data in this case is the website you requested. Once the request arrives, the server retrieves the website and sends the correct data back to the client. A client is any computer that receives data from a server. The client in this case is your computer or your phone, as the case may be. When your computer receives the data, the browser interprets and renders it. And the cycle continues. If you click a new link, the step begins all over. Sometimes, your browser may also interact with the server in the background without leaving the page. For example, when you sign up in some sites and they request you to type your site's password twice, many pages will tell you that they don't match even before you press enter. That's the work of JavaScript. JavaScript is the only programming language that the browser understands by default. And the funny part, all these happen in seconds. The code returned by the server is made up of two primary components, HTML and CSS. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. A markup language is a computer language that uses tags to define the structure of a document. There are many other markup languages, but the two most popular are HTML and XML. HTML is generally used for content. It tells the browser what's on the page. It informs it whether a component is a heading, or a paragraph, or a link, or an image, you name it. HTML, however, is not a programming language. It contains no programming logic, and it cannot modify data. It can only display data. It's just there to define data and describe its purpose on the web page using tags. But don't worry. Even with pure HTML, you might not be a programmer, but you are still a coder. Knowledge of markup languages is compulsory for any programmer. With the emergence of HTML5, HTML's capabilities and opportunities to define and structure web page data has soared to its new heights. This makes solid understanding of HTML even more useful to have. Back in the days, HTML pages looked dull and boring. Because even though we could add some style to the page using HTML, it wasn't robust and it was extremely useful, stressful. Enter CSS, the greatest invention in the history of the web. CSS brings some flavor to a HTML page. It handles stuff like colors, borders, typography, backgrounds, positioning, and so much more. Let's use the example of building a house to further illustrate this. To build a house, we first have to erect the structure of the house using blocks and cement, and of course, roof the house. At this point, the house is complete in terms of structure, but it doesn't look so good. It requires painting, plastering, curtains, and stuff to make it actually feel like a home. That's exactly what happens in a web page. HTML gives a web page its structure, and though a website can stand with the structure alone, it will never feel like one. Then comes in CSS to style it and give it a better look. The world of web design and development has expanded and is still expanding. New technologies come out every year to make the web experience better for the users and make it smooth in every device. Concepts like mobile first approach, new morphism, responsive web design, etc. are trending right now. However, without a basic knowledge of HTML and CSS, you can never dive into these technologies. You can never even start any programming language related to the web without having a basic knowledge of HTML and CSS. So stay tuned as you get to master HTML and CSS with my upcoming videos. If you love this video then, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications to get notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching. See you.